So a few off-field issues at Port Adelaide. The issues at Adelaide are more on-field, but they are just as stark. And their coach, Matthew Nix, has had some interesting comments already early in the year after his post-match press conferences. At the moment, we're, we're in a slump. We, you know, we're in the dark at this point, really struggling with our game, but we'll find it. Oh, there's, there's always guys ready to go. Um, it's a matter of us whether we make that decision whether we feel that that guy's ready to step in and, and do a better job. It's quite a step up from SAFL to AFL level. Oh, the pressure is building. You can sense it. You can sense it in every Matthew Nix uh, media conference after every game. And Sam, we were part of an interview, you and I, and you asked Scotty Burns, the assistant coach, a question before round two. How ready is this team comparative to the rest of the comp to play finals this year? Well, if you look at last year, we were ready last year, wouldn't you think, Sam? Did we, you think that? or didn't make it, though. No, we didn't make it, but do you think we were ready? That was what you said, ready. Well, I just go on results and you didn't make it, so I was just wondering... No, that's we, OK. I just we... wanted to see if you had to elaborate on that. I would have thought that most teams that played us last year would have thought that we were very similar to um, some finals teams. Uh, well, yeah. they're not now. Uh, and you just wonder, Matthew Nix, I, th I think he's had a really difficult year. I think he's had a poor year. And to your point, I think he's feeling the pressure. Who there? And it is, it is dangerous when you put these names up because we don't have enough information about how they work behind the scenes. But to me, it looks inexperienced. And I just wonder of the loss of James Raleigh, who is so highly regarded. And they got him and they poached him to Adelaide, but he's gone back to Geelong. You know, so when you take a key personnel out of your footy department, the impact that that can have as well. You worried about with, him? Yeah, I seriously worried about it. You look at their draw, this, this could be building significantly in terms of the rest of the year. And there's a lot of things that I see and it speaks to the fact that you're just worrying about yourself when you're playing. So Stephen May's got smash ribs. Like they, they are smashed up. A nasty injury. This is early in the game. He takes that easy mark against Taylor Walker and he's sore. You can see it. Everyone knows, we all know, he's got broken ribs. And that's the first seven minutes. This is his next three contests. Do you think any Adelaide player has tested out Stephen May? Look at Walker's opportunity to stick his knee into May's ribs there, but no, he doesn't even... He gets out marked again, so... so what, why did that happen? Why be, because May... they're worried about themselves. They're worried about how they're going to impact, rather than take yourself out of it, sacrifice yourself for the team. And when I say Matthew Nix has had a difficult year, this is one of the reasons they have not been able to stop the weapons behind the ball. We saw the embarrassment with Tom Stewart and their inability to stop that. Ten record intercept marks, Pierce, uh, and then we saw Lever and May once again. So that's a significant issue um, for them. I, was I hope, they, about I hope they didn't. I hope yeah. they didn't think it was going to happen. I mean, listen, I'd never heard that Scott Burns interview. Mm. That sound, they, they weren't ready to play finals. They, it wasn't just. I mean, Ben Keys was unfortunate, and that was a terrible thing that happened. But they would have just scraped in. Mm. And, and their they, record away from home is poor and continues to be poor. They, they've lost the close games, lost a lot of close games last year, and their inaccuracy. So there was uh, different factors as well to go into just that missed point. And now it gets really tough for them. Yeah, and the boys at Marble Stadium on Saturday doesn't get easy, right, Caro? No, and, and meanwhile. Well, the team that beat them, Matthew, despite probably the worst off-field season of any club, is flying, the Melbourne Football Club. Oh, they are. They are absolutely flying, as you just touched on, and the depth of them, Kane. So they've got high-end talent who are flying, but also now more... More backbone sort so, of Yeah, life. so the improvement that they're getting from some of their lesser lights. So you would have said lesser lights at the start of the season are now not. So Winsor just comes in, makes an instant impact. How's, you know, where, where did they get him from? There's a bit of the Geelong model there, has sat on the list for a couple of years. Mick V was just amazing in the first half. Kay Chandler's a player who's improved significantly. Sparrow and, and Neil Bullen is now an A-grade high half forward in the game. So that's where their improvement has come from, as well as the leadership and the drive from Gorn and Petrarca and Viney. Where do they sit in your premiership favourites? Top four. They'll, they'll be there on prelim final week, I would think, yeah. from now.